insecurity was revealed in, on, in me being so hard on myself. I could have done better. All I saw was the wrongs and not the rights. And 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 it, it would come like I would need it would it would it would show itself like man, I didn't get more amens. I didn't get more good jobs. I didn't What's up, guys? Welcome to Faith Talk. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Support this channel. I can't grow this without you. So, recently I shared this with my church, and I wanted to come on here and share this with you and to go deeper into what I shared. So, in my time with God, in my prayer time and fasting with God, God uses that time. He used that time to reveal so much. And the thing that I want you to understand that when you spend time with God, it's not only for a prophetic word or for a message. If all you see is other people in your time with God, I don't think you're really spending time with God. Because the first thing that God does when you're in him, when you're in his word, is that he reveals you to you. The, the, the word of God says that the, the scriptures, the Bible is a mirror, right? And a mirror shows you to yourself it shows you how you look so in my prayer time i've made it a greater emphasis to allow god to show me myself and what i have to work on things i may ha not have known or have forgotten things that are hidden and i'm trying to ignore um these things god has been revealing to me because i know until i deal with these demons i i can't go to a certain level my growth will be limited so I recently had a 21 day fast and going into this fast, I had no, I had no prayer list. I had no journal. I just wanted God to fix me, right? Psalm 139 says, Lord, search, search me, search my heart. And that's the attitude I, I went into. Cause sometimes you sit here and in your prayer time, all you do is, is focus on other people and what God needs to do for you. But no, no, spend time and say, God, what do I need to do? What's wrong with me? Maybe there's something in my personality. Maybe it's something that I have to deal with that's preventing me from growing and walking into that thing I keep praying about. So I sat here and I fasted and God revealed to me that I needed to deal with my insecurity and I didn't realize <laughs> I didn't realize I was insecure until God just showed certain things in me to reveal that this is a spirit that I need to deal with. That I was a pastor. I appeared very confident on this on the surface, but deep down inside I had a level of of insecurity. I had, had self-esteem issues that I had to deal with. So, you know, and it revealed and it revealed to me where um Every Sunday, I, I would leave church and I would just be so upset because I felt I could have done a better job. You know, I missed this point. I didn't say hi to this person. I didn't reach out to this person. So I'm driving, leaving service, and all I'm doing is sitting in silence, going in my, through my mind on things I didn't do well, on things that I should have improved on, things I could have done better. All I saw was the wrongs and not the rights. And, and, and it, it would come like I would need... It would, it would, it would show itself like, man, I didn't get more amens. I didn't get more good jobs. I didn't hear it from the people. So the, the insecurity was revealed in, on, in me being so hard on myself. And sometimes when we're just so difficult on ourselves, it's rooted in a level of a lack of identity, um, a lack of a, a, a low self-esteem and a level of insecurity because what happens is the reason why you're so hard on yourself is because you're not getting the results or the feedback that you expected. So because you're not getting amens, because folks are not quoting you or, you know, whatever that may look like, the results that you want, the feedback that you want, if you're not getting it, it causes you to beat yourself up. And then this allows us to get a sense of pride because you're going to say, you know what, what do I need to do to get my intended result? 
What do I need to say? What do I need to, to, to dress like? What do I need to look like in order for me to get that result? So I found myself sitting here just beating myself up after every service because I didn't get the feedback or the results that I wanted. That I may God may have moved mightily, but because of one person, because of a lack of response, I thought, man, I, I, I didn't do well. Right. And then the dangerous part about it, on the other hand, is that when you're battling this, when you get that feedback, it causes pride to come in your heart. Look what I did. OK, this is good right now. So and not only that, not only do you get pride because you sit here and you constantly look back at yourself and and you and you feel good when you get that feedback and that and that result, then you try to compromise because instead of seeking God, you find sermons, you find services, you find ministry, you find um, being a dad, being a wife, you find that um, as a formula or an algorithm. Well, if I do this again, I will get this result. If I just say the same words, I will do this result or watch this. If I do what he does, I will get his results. So if I if I use Mike Todd's sermon and his approach and his style, then maybe I will get the same fame and notoriety of Mike Todd. Right. So a lot of this is 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 dangerous because it can lead to pride. And instead of seeking God, I seek Mike Todd instead of seeking God and what God wants to do. It, it causes me to find a formula to get the result that I wanted. And, and we have to understand seeking God and doing the will of God is not always a place of popularity. As a matter of fact, normally where God takes you is an un unpopular place. Normally where God takes you is a place where you're going to be by yourself. Look at the people, um, the Israelites, the book of Numbers, chapter 14 or so, where they got to the um, promised land. They sent out 12 spies to, to spy out the land. Only two came back with a, a, a good report. Ten said, you know what, this land is not good. We look like grasshoppers compared to them. So that the, the popular vote, the popular, the loudest voice was staying to say back. But God's voice, though they had two supporting, was saying to go forward. And the people ultimately led to, to doing what the popular vote said. Right. And that caused God to be frustrated and disappointed in them. So. So instead of seeking God and saying, God, what do you want me to do? You seek um, an algorithm. You, you seek a, a process. Well, I'm going to, this work last and I'm going to do this again. This works at the church down the block. Let me try the same thing, but God is calling everyone to do something unique. So what God's calling pastor Mike Todd to do may not cause me to do it. And you know what happens that I found that if you m mimic someone's process, you may get different outcomes. Right. You may sit here and, and, and try to do what someone else does. But and it's very same way. But the, out, the, the results may not be the same because that's not what God has called you to do. That's not where God has called you to do. So it, it leads to, to a level of not seeking God. Also, a level of compromise, because, you know, then you won't preach on certain topics because you want that feedback. You don't want folks to leave. You want a packed church. You want the amens. And when you, you know, so, so you do whatever it takes to get that type of result. So that spirit became very dangerous. And I felt like, you know, um, I was compromising. I felt that I was silent in certain situations that I shouldn't have been silent because I just wanted the, the, the optics. I just wanted the approval. I just wanted um, the people. And I, I was just so hard on myself. And a lot of us, we're just so we, we are constantly beating ourselves up and you think it's a noble thing, but it's actually a demonic thing. It's something that the enemy is sending you to cause you to be so frustrated with the process that you begin to take matters into your own hand. It's begin to say, you know what? I'm not going to wait for God anymore. I'm going to just go on YouTube and watch someone else's service and watch someone else's podcast or, or follow someone else's path, someone else's marriage and do the same exact thing. But what is God calling you to do? Because we, we, we teach that God's grace is only found in what he has called you to do, to do. So stay in your lane. Stay in where he has asked you to be. Stay in the very place that God has called you to be. Not, not everybody else. 
Where has God called you to be? It may be lonely. It, it may be a difficult road. It may be an unpopular path, but you have to do what God has called you to do. That's where you'll find his grace, his strength, his power, his provision, and what God has called you to do. So I sat here and I'm like, you know, during this moment of fasting recently, God revealed to me that I'm, I'm insecure. Um, and I, and it's rooted in a lack of identity and not knowing, not, not, not saying not knowing who I am, but it's rooted in not knowing whose I am. And that my identity is not tied to what people say. My identity is tied to God. My identity is not tied to um, likes or amens. My identity is tied in God. So I sat here and just had to uproot it and to, and to uproot all that insecurity and plant myself in God's identity. The way to battle insecurity is to realize that you belong to God and nothing you, you do affects your identity. It's not uh, depending on who likes you or supports you. It's found in God. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God knows our shortcomings, right? And when he called Moses, Moses was like, God, why do, you, why do you call me? I stutter. Use Aaron. God said, I know you stutter, but I still called you. So, our, our, so this insecurity, and, you know, it's easy to blame my upbringing. And, I, you know, as I sit here, I don't know where, you know, I, 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 don't, I can't sit there and blame my, maybe I could blame my um, upbringing because growing up in my household, they, they were, there weren't any, that many pats on the back and that many good jobs, son. If you do well in school, you do what you're expected to do. If, you're, if you serve God, that's what I brought you to church, you, you're supposed to serve God. I think it's after I became older, you know, um, my dad, you know, became a, I became a dad and became a pastor is as we, my dad and I became older, I started to see like, you know, my dad's proud of me. Right. And, um, growing up, I didn't feel it. And I'm not throwing shade on my dad. I, 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 my parents are, were amazing. And, and I, I, I'm not throwing dirt on their names at all. It was more something in me where I needed to hear it, right? It's not about not knowing it. It's needing to hear it. I need to hear a good job. I needed to hear well done, right? And I think a lot of times that when you don't get that, it causes you to um, be hurt, um, go, go the extra mile. And back to what I said early, it causes you to not to undervalue what you did. So, for example, let's use the school. I'm, I may get an A+, plus, but because my dad didn't say, good job, son, or my mom didn't say, great job, son, I wouldn't value my A+. Plus. I'll minimize it. Now, fast forward 30 years later, I'm a pastor. If I don't get the good job or the amens or the this and that or the mega church, it, won't, it, it, it would undervalue what God is doing in our midst right now. So I think a lot of it is being able to be focused on God and to trust God and being able to um, keep your eyes on him and saying, you know what? I don't need approval of man. All I need is approval from God. And the reason why I sought that approval and those results is because of, of an insecurity that was um, ingrained in me. I never realized that. Like I, I was pastoring, I was ministering and preaching. What level of insecurity? Like um, I mean, one person said, "Pastor, how are you so confident? You know, despite not getting any amens, you still just preaching what God's telling you to preach." I said, "I don't know." And then that to me was I'd say it was to me it didn't matter. Like I, I appeared confident. On the exterior, but deep down inside, I was like, yo, this is tough. So, yeah, I mean, I thank God for setting me free. I thank God for, for, for revealing this to me and showing this to me. But I also thank God not only for revealing it to me, but giving me the grace and a game plan to set me free. 
Now my identity is not rooted in amen. I don't need any amen. I don't need any approval. I don't need a packed church. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to bite my tongue. I'm not going to be silent. I'm going to do and say whatever God has called me to do, popular or unpopular. I think that um, level of trust and identity in God and desire to please God has helped me leaps and bounds, has caused me, I feel God so much in my life and in my ministry and in my church. And you know what? And you know, over the past few weeks of just being un, un apologetic, doing what God's called me to do and, and, and working on this low self-esteem. And by all means, it creeps in every now and then. I'm not saying I'm fully free and I'm just like uber confident. It creeps in every now and then and you worry and you and you beat yourself up and you blame yourself for everything. It, it still happens, but I am not where I used to be. And I think, you know, the one thing that it allows me to do and the funny thing about it that, that God has been blessing us that me not caring and doing what God has called me to do has caused the church and caused myself to be blessed. And that feeling of you doing the will of God cannot compare to any amount of amens or likes or followers or support. So it, it, you know, I want to share this with you. And, um, because I know there's some people who are going through this and you don't even realize it. And God, loves you so much to cause you to watch this video and and to find a way uh, to get rid of this and to grow from this. So um, I pray it blesses you. I pray that you you um, see God and you hear God more in your life. And, when, and this spirit of, of insecurity, the spirit of so, low self-esteem won't have power over you anymore. But thank you for listening. Um, meet me in the comments. Tell me what you think. Um, I love you guys. God bless you guys. Peace.